Hello, is third time a charm here? <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Hard to laughing. <laughs> Davaste. Yes, for a moment I thought AI was uh, sabotaging <laughs> my call. I've had that problem before, but not this time. <laughs> yes, uh, I hope you're okay. You know, I recently saw a video saying it's a bad idea to take three-hour daytime naps because that'll keep you in a groggy state. But you sound, judging by the tone of your laugh, you sound pretty, uh, sound pretty awake and ready to go. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well... It's great that you uh, were willing to come on. It only makes sense that uh, I don't know if it <laughs> – well, happy birthday, Donald Trump. I don't think there's any um, significance behind the fact that we're having this interview on the same day he turns uh, 71. I'm a really big fan of him anyway, but <laughs> just thought I'd point that out. But anyhow, Greg, great to be speaking to you. Um, why don't we go till uh, 7.55 instead of 8, just so I could uh, enjoy my little um, – pre-sunset walk and get the uh, final uh, sun gazing session I want to get in before the sun officially goes down at um, 8.30 is the sunset time up here in the Philly suburbs. So with that being said, I uh, did prepare for this interview, listening to those two Facebook uh, video things that you uh, <laughs> recently did, learned a few things from, from that I did. And mm -hmm. um, I don't think we need to get into your life story it seems like every okay. guest i've had on recently i've done that but you've gone into that uh quite mm -hmm. a few times except for maybe we'll, we'll talk about the secret a little bit later on but okay. first uh everybody seems to associate you with um in 5d uh first of all uh does the d stand for dimension density or both and second of all what to you um is the fifth dimension or density all about okay well yeah d stands for dimension um, and obviously anyone that knows me knows that I got this galactic download uh, back in 2008 when I was given the name in 5D by Universe. And uh, before I know we're going to get into the law of attraction but uh, a little later, but I just want to make sure that I cover this too. Um, it's really important that you surrender yourself to Universe. And that's really what led me to um, having this galactic download was I surrendered. At the time, I was a successful child and family therapist, and I had written my own program designed to help families who are at risk of dissolution, children going through the reunification process, and for parents in need of parenting classes, and I have a uh, patent pending on this program. And it was approved by the area's largest human services facility, and I was using that in a three-county area, but yet I knew that there was more, much more I needed to be doing. So uh, that's when I surrendered. And uh, I went outside one evening and I said, I, I give up, universe. What is it I need to be doing? And that's when I got my galactic download. And for those who don't know what a galactic download is, um, it's, it's kind of like receiving this huge hologram of information all at once. Instantly, you know, you know everything about what you're supposed to be doing. And uh, but the problem was, they said that I was supposed to be doing interviews and conferences, and I'm supposed to be a, doing public speaking. I'm like, you got the wrong guy. I'm an introvert, and they said, no, you're the one. And now I realize why, because you know, I've written several articles on N5D about introverts, and I'll put a a poll at the end of the article. And I've found that over 80, 85% of the people that read N5D are introverts. So basically, Universe was saying, you're going to be the voice of the introverts. And uh, it makes sense, too, when you think about it, because introverts tend to go within uh, to look for the answers, while extroverts are always asking everyone else, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? But we go within, and that's part of the soul searching. And ultimately, what you find is yourself. So as getting back to your question, though, um, what is the fifth dimension? Well, I've actually been there uh, and experienced it through one of my visions that I had, where basically I saw myself standing in front of myself, and all of a sudden, this white light floods the planet. And when that happens, and I'm not sure if that's a solar flash from the sun, a uh, something coming from the center of the galactic core, or what, but when that happens, the only thing you'll feel 
is unconditional love on a scale that you've never felt before. Now, anyone that knows me knows that my daughter is my everything. She's the most important thing on the planet. And as much as I love her, the love that you feel pales. And the only number, if I were to put a number on it, would be a million times stronger than the thing that you love the most. And I'm certainly underestimating the number that I'm putting on it. Also, one, another thing that's, that you're going to feel is the lack of any third dimensional BS that we, we currently feel. Um, all third dimensional worries and issues are cleansed. They're gone. You, the only thing you can feel is that love. You don't worry about any bad relationship you might be in or politics, religion. Um, Alex Jones doesn't matter at that point in time. Sorry, Andrew. Uh, but <laughs> uh, that's, that's where we're heading and that's the kind of feeling that it is. So, you know, to actually be blessed with not only the vision, but the feeling of what it feels like. Boy, uh, I I can't wait, honestly. And I think a lot of people are kind of sensing that it's impending. Now, I've never had any dates that I've been able to put on any dreams or visions or anything like that that I've had. You know, I do see things before they happen. And some things are, have already happened. This stuff hasn't happened yet. Um, but this is one of the things that I I – if you talk to anyone, everyone can sense that feeling of impending something. Something's going to happen real soon, but real soon is relative. It could be five years. It could be 10 years, but it's going to happen. And uh, to be able to experience and feel that was amazing. So I'm very blessed to you know, have these, these kind of um, experiences and to be able to, to share them with other people. And the funny part is once I share them with people, you can go on the N5D YouTube channel or N5D.com and read about the three tidal wave dream I had where the first two converge and the last ones are like a cleansing wave. And so many other people have had these tidal wave dreams. But not only that, a number of people have had the dream of three tidal waves. So we're all riding this um, galactic wave of consciousness, consciousness and pulling – these uh, memories from the aether where time doesn't exist anyway. So we've already done this. And that's one of my messages that I've been telling a lot of people is that we're re-remembering that we've already done this. So I, I hope that that resonates with a lot of people that are listening. It does resonate with me. And um, just a quick side note, um, I myself have noticed that as the vibrational – frequency rises i um the whole thing you said alex jones doesn't matter anymore well yeah i, I notice the same thing i mean i don't watch this video as much as i used to right now it's basically just go to infowars.com and read the headline and um then read the little sub art thing in black in the articles just to see what the headline's all about but um mm -hmm. it's an unavoidable consequence that as uh the vibrational frequency rises you really don't have to listen to fear porn as much anymore mm -hmm. um uh, interestingly i do seem to recall you said the reason you subscribe to his channel is because uh he occasionally lets David Icke on, although it's been a long time since Icke's come on the program, and I bet the fact that Jones and Icke do not see eye to eye in regards to trusting Donald Trump probably has something to do with that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but, uh, that's uh, maybe we'll get into that later on. Um, what you think about um, the political view uh, of this world now and everything? But uh, about the um, nature of the fifth dimension, elaborating on it a little further, a lot of. Um, agree to disagree kind of thing going on here regarding what the nature of the fifth dimension is about while some would assert it's just a um it's just a service to self versus service to others measurement where it's a lot more service to others in 5d than it would be in 3d or 4d others think of the fifth dimension as being some sort of a near utopian paradise where um everyone's burp, burping butterflies or something like that and there's a uh, bright colors everywhere and uh everybody's got a highly crystalline body and all that but many would see that and think that's a completely far out view of the fifth dimension which is uh taking it a little bit to an extreme although anybody who's listened to uh, people like um, Andromeda Council contact Etolik would think otherwise, because of course his view of what a 40 5D reality is, well, it was, of course that's based on what his contacts have told him, is um, is his view, and that's different from what other people would define as the nature of a, a 3D, 40, 5D reality. But um, 
for those that want to try to settle the confusion on this, do you associate um, the, the 5D reality more with the behavior and the aspects of the entities in that reality or the actual construct of the living and non-living things that exist in that um, dimension? Hmm. That's an interesting question. A lot of people, and I found this more recently than not, a lot of people are concerned about the physical body. Am I taking it with me? Does it really matter? Honestly, because I believe that in the fifth dimension, we become light bodies and we'll recognize each other from our energy signatures. So the day, minute, hour, second that you were born, that's your en energy signature. And it, while it might be possible that you could manifest a body, why would you even need it? That's third dimensional ego, I believe, that would say, oh, I still want to keep my body. It doesn't matter at that time. I can't wait to get rid of this meat suit, you know? So I think that's just a matter of perspective. No one truly knows, honestly, what to expect. I can have these visions. I can even step in there and feel what I felt, but that's from a third dimensional perspective. Maybe that's all I'm allowed to see and feel. It's probably a whole hell of a lot more than that. And, um, and if we truly are re-remembering, then that's all I'm allowed to re-remember at that point or see from a third dimensional level. So for what it's worth, um, I don't think anyone truly knows, even though we're kind of re-remembering what it was like, but it's hard to put yourself in that perspective in a third dimensional body. Fair enough response. Uh, no one knows. Yes, well, the fact that there's so many different views on it uh, makes the nobody knows answer seem fair enough. But um, what what you just said about um, like leaving the body and all that and what this reality would be like for for those of us whether it is our last um last trek or last chance for that matter it i do recall um in the not too distant past you seem to have uh, had a very inauspicious synchronistic event where two different people uh told you something about how um everybody has this opportunity to move on to the next reality but those that fail will be for all intents and purposes, totally screwed because this is their last chance and you found that to be so inauspicious you decided to make a video about that to basically make the disclaimer, please do not misconstrue, this is fear porn, I just need to get this out because it's of huge practical significance from a synchronistic standpoint Have uh, ever since you made that video have you learned anything further about what those people may have been implying when, well one of them anyway suggested that those that don't um, succeed in this reality are screwed because this is their last chance. I think you're referring to a video that I made. Um, gosh, that might have been in 2008, 2009. No, it was definitely um, longer, than, um, it, more recent than that. Like maybe um, really? 2015, I think maybe you really? made, made this video. Yes, hmm. this was a uh, – yeah, you and Michelle Walling did the um, – spoke about this, about how um, two different people in like the same day met up with you and told you um, – about every this is um, people's opportunity to uh, stop being sheeple and start raising their consciousness, and those that choose not to do it are going to be in a lot of trouble because they. Um, I, I could take time to look it up, but no, that might be too much. Of a That's okay. In regards to this yeah, interview. but don't I, worry about that. I just thought maybe you may have um, learned something um, new in, this, in the time that you made that video to think maybe um, to see maybe what exactly that person was uh, talking about because you seem pretty confused yourself when you tried well, to make sense of it. So. Okay, well, you know, to, when you mentioned that, I said people are screwed. I, I would, I would, I would remember that. I don't remember saying that, Andrew, honestly, because I always think that even if you're not part of the shift, no one's screwed because this is all about the experience. So you still have that opportunity. It's just not right now, and that there's nothing wrong with that. Some people are just here, like Dolores Cannon said, to hold the vibration and. Uh, to be part, to experience what it was like to be here when the shift happens, even though they might not necessarily make it themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. I do think it com comes down to the 51%, you know, and Dolores Cannon mentioned that as well, you know, that you have to be at least 51% positive. That's not very hard to do, I, I don't think. 
Um, you would think otherwise if you were to watch CNN or listen to Alex Jones, who I did unsubscribe to. I'm sorry, but um, I did unsubscribe to him. Too much fear uh, porn on there for me. I am unsubscribed to a lot of uh, YouTube channels. Of course, I'm still subscribed to yours, though. <laughs> I listen to just about all your interviews. I haven't – not 100 percent, but just about all of them. You're doing such a great job, Andrew, and I'm so happy that I remember when you first would call into N5D Radio, and I kept telling you over and over again, man, you should have a show. You should do a show. You would be really good at this, and you are. You ask a lot of hard-hitting questions, and I think people appreciate that. Yes, I probably should have pointed that out from the very start. If it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't have this – well, definitely wouldn't have this show. It was at the um, October 2013 Return to Atlantis conference where I officially made the decision um, to, to, do this, uh, to do this show. Um, mm-hmm. What exactly happened from a magical metaphysical standpoint at that conference that implanted that um, inspiration in my mind? I don't know. Maybe it was the quartz crystal sand on the beach or whatever, but mm-hmm. whatever it was, it was a, <laughs> it was a blessing in many ways. Mm-hmm. So, um, all right, going on with this, uh, with this interview, I guess one of the best ways for me to, uh, uh, go without, go throughout this interview is to use your, uh, in 5d.com website as a guide. And maybe I'll check out some of the other sister sites that you got as well. But mm-hmm. looking at the subtitle here, esoteric, metaphysical, and spiritual, um, well, well, first of all, esoteric, um, this often is what, uh, covers a lot of areas that, uh, some of it may fall out of the realm of, um, of the uh, metaphysical and spiritual, but there's no question that uh, a lot of the things that you want to try to cover on your site are things that are deliberately kept hidden from the from the general public in order to keep mm-hmm. us in the dark. Um, I do recall, um, seem to recall Mr. Michelle Walling saying that uh, after you made that um, uh, other site, uh, Woo Woo Media or whatever it was, mm-hmm. there seemed to be a lot of criticism for that because a lot of people uh, seem to think that this stuff was out of their out of their comfort zone. Although I I, I beg to differ. I think um, mm-hmm. it, it makes <laughs> sense to research that stuff, but still to say it's some um, out of your comfort zone. Well, that's um, I think that's a little bit of a problem. And I'm going to get into that later on, by the way. But uh, esoteric okay. stuff. Um, what kind of things that are hidden aside from metaphysical and spiritual stuff? Um, do you feel is worth um, revealing? Well, <laughs> that could be a whole show in itself, Andrew. We'll just make it like a list, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Like I try to make a list out of it, not a full blown what, collaboration. One of my favorite things, and uh, you know, as you know, I've interviewed Jordan Maxwell several times, is religion. I, I absolutely am fascinated by religion and how many people blindly follow something that they're not really willing to question. And one of my favorite things to question about religion is Genesis 126, where it says, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. And the us ends up being, well, it's not the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost because the Son wasn't born until the New Testament. So the us end up being the Elohim, who are mentioned often and frequently in the Old Testament, El means God, Ohim is plural, so let us, the creator gods, make man in our own image. Another thing I like questioning is that there's four different blood types, A, B, AB, and O, two different RH values, positive and negative, and all the combinations of those. So it's impossible to get four different blood types, two different RH values from Adam and Eve, so how did we get here? So, and once again, it Right from the start of the Bible, it starts off with hot air and bullshit. It's, it starts off with a lie. So how did we get here? In my opinion, it's a combination of what Zechariah Sitchin said about the Anunnaki, that they genetically manipulated us, uh, several templates of us actually, uh, to create a slave to mine gold for them. And, or, but I think it's and, Uh, We were seeded here by various galactic star nations, and that would explain all the differences of race, ethnicity, blood types, RH values, everything. It makes a hell of a lot more sense than what the Bible's trying to tell us. Another thing about the Bible that I love questioning is uh, Noah's Ark. How did Noah, how did Noah get animals that were not indigenous to his area, like polar bears and sea lions and penguins? He couldn't have. He didn't. It didn't happen. The one thing I do love about the Bible is that it's written in perfect astro-theological 
form where it starts out with the uh, golden calf, which represents the age of Taurus, and then the blowing of the ram's horn, the age of uh, Aries, uh, Jesus feeding the masses with two fish, the age of Pisces, and when uh, Jesus told the man bearing the pitcher of water to go to the house, that's the age of Aquarius, which we're in right now, the age of uh, – the, it's, an, it's an air sign, but it's the water bearer, so I think that's why people are having these water dreams, these flood dreams, tidal waves and stuff. It's – to, it's to show us that we are in the age of Aquarius. Like I said, even though Aquarius is an air sign, Aquarius is the water bearer. Some other things I like to uh, uncover is um, – like Saturnalia is another good one. Uh, uh, Christmas, Christmas time, what that really means, how that date came to be – came to fruition and what it really means. And if you go back, you'll find that you know Saturnalia was a week long of – debauchery and celebration is really to celebrate Saturn and the Christians tried to co-opt it this this existed before Christianity and then the Christians tried to co-opt it saying that oh you can have your Saturnalia along with the celebration of Christ the birth of Christ well if you do your research which I have um, you'll find that there were nine other versions of Christ that preceded Jesus and same story over and over again, you know, born on December 25th to a virgin mother, died, resurrected after three days, so on and so forth. The story gets old. It gets really old. How many times are we going to believe it? Uh, this guy, I've been here and done this enough times where I probably didn't believe this the last three or four lifetimes. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, stuff along that line. I, I find all this stuff very fascinating, stuff that doesn't make sense. If it leads you down the rabbit hole and makes you ask questions, follow that intuition and look for the answers. These are just some of the answers and questions that I have, but I encourage anyone listening to question just about everything. And ultimately, what you're going to find is yourself. Right, uh, but I, since you mentioned uh – Jesus, I do remember my, when I read Jordan Maxwell, one of the first people who commented was you saying, I totally believe in Jordan that the fictional Jesus never existed. Well, well, hold on just a minute here. We got different people saying different things about this. You got Andrew Bartz asserting that Christ was a solar being, a human incarnation of the sun, and his story has been twisted. Um, and you got people like Billy Meyer, the Pleiadian Nordic contactee, saying that there was this um, guy named Emmanuel who lived mm -hmm. during the alleged time of Christ who was the son of a man begotten by a Pleiadian Nordic extraterrestrial and an Earth woman named Mary. And the story of Jesus is a fictionalized version of Emmanuel's life. Um, and then you got people that believe in other dimensions or realms or w whatever word you want to use, universes, whatever, that would assert that since thoughts manifest into reality, everything that we can think about and imagine, uh, Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, and yes, even Jesus <laughs> and the religious figures must exist in some way, shape, or form in those other realities. And the more people that think about those things, the more probabilistic it is that those things exist in another reality. So to say that it does not exist, you got to put an asterisk on that, many would assert. So could you maybe clarify what you mean when you say um, it, he didn't exist when the, for the reasons I've given someone to say no, yeah, he did exist in some way in some other reality or in some form that many people are being kept in the dark about? I'm not going to deny anyone else's beliefs or belief systems about Jesus, if they think he existed, well, that's that's their reality, and I'm not one to uh, question anyone else's reality. But if you do your homework, <laughs> in the words of Jordan Maxwell, um, you'll find that uh, there was no Jesus before the year 325 AD, uh, obviously after death of himself, but there was nothing, no historical evidence of Jesus existing. And Billy Meyer was kind of correct in the fact that when Constantine brought together the Council of Nicaea, it was because there were all these um, Yeshua ben Yosef cults going on because it was prophesied that the Messiah would come. Now, Yeshua ben Yosef was a real person. Of course, Yeshua ben Yosef means Joshua, son of Joseph. And... Uh, 
he was a rebel. He rebelled against the taxation system, and he and his wife, Mary Magdalene, and their daughter ended up moving. I, I don't remember if it's Spain or France, but they ended up moving, lived their lives out as normal people there, and – but because there was no internet, obviously, back then, um, they developed a cult around him being a rebel and that that if they could at least claim that he was the Messiah, which nobody could prove back then, then people would rally around them thinking that their cult religion was the one that had the Messiah. So all these Yeshua ben Yosef cults were popping up all over the place. And Constantine was the one that brought them together at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD and unified them under one person, one name, Iusis Christos, which eventually became Jesus Christ once the letter J was invented in the 1500s or so. Of course, there was no letter J until the 1500s, so there's no John, Jacob, Jeremiah, Joseph, <laughs> you know, really John, the name John in the Mid Middle East. Really? <laughs> anyway. Uh, so they, they brought together the, uh, this under one unified name, Iusus Christos, which became Jesus Christ, and they gave him the mythological abilities of Mithra, Osiris, and Horus. So they, they made him superhuman. And of course, because Jesus forgave everyone of all their sins, that's what attracted uh, Constantine to this cult because he basically killed his way to the top. And was able to forgive himself through uh, Yeshua ben Yosef, you know, at the time. But that was the bringing together of the Jesus Christ story. And from that point forward, the myth had begun um, of the same character that had been portrayed nine other times beforehand. So for people to say that they've, they've seen him or whatever, you know, I did it. I think it was on my second well, it was actually on both my first and second Facebook Lives. I did mention about channeling. Channeling is real. I've been channeling since I was born, as far as I know, because I've always heard right before I'd go to sleep, I'd hear these voices. And it sounded like muffled voices in the room next to me, but it wasn't my parents. It wasn't my sisters. It wasn't the TV. It was something different. And it wasn't until maybe about 10 years ago or so that I was just about to fall asleep. And these voices came in loud and clear. I keep a pen and a piece of paper next to my bed to write down my dreams. And so I grabbed the pen and I'd start asking away. What happens? Anyone that channels knows that this is true. When you're asking a question, they're already communicating with you telepathically. So you can start asking a question and before you even get done with it, even a fraction of it, they're already answering that question. So one of my questions was, how is this possible for us to communicate right now? The only part I was able to get out was, how is this possible that <laughs> – and they're already answering the question um, because they already knew what the question was. And what, what I was told was that right before you go to sleep, your mind goes into the alpha state, which makes that possible. Now, I have a video on the N5D YouTube channel as well as an article that explains it more in depth on n5d.com on how to open up your third eye. And it's virtually the same thing. Once your mind is in that alpha state, you're able to open up the pineal gland and get visions and see what's going on. That's It's so simple to open up your third eye, but you have to be able to keep your mind in that alpha state right before you fall asleep. That's the trick. It's too easy to fall asleep, but if you can keep your mind in that alpha state, You'll be able to use your third eye like I've done at the beach. There could be you know, a thousand people around me, and if I just close my eyes and get in that alpha state, everything's gone. It's just me and the beach and whatever visions I get. So I'll take it that you are not on the same page as people like George Kavazlis who assert that it's kind of a bad idea to, to go with the third eye uh, or – well, not – totally entirely forget about it but you shouldn't go obsess about the third eye because it's in the mind and they want control of our minds they meaning the powers that should not be and it's better to just go with heart all the time and i also and i'm also going to guess you're not on the same page as as george in regards to the whole forget about the chakras chakras are so 3d based i i'm also not on the same page with him but i've said before it's because i i kind of think uh, to have a little excitement in life you gotta go with a variety and if you forget about the chakras and forget about the third eye entirely and always go with the heart 
start, you're going to get bored. If he can do that all the time and not get bored, well, more power to him. But I, I think that's kind of a, a pathetic way of going about life, for lack of a better word. So well, you're not on you the have, same page as him, are you? You have to remember that the pineal gland isn't part of the brain. You know, so it's really not in the mind. You're tapping into the pineal gland. It's separate. It's individual of the brain. It just happens just happens to be in the center of, and basically almost en- encased around. So, I, I think it's a great idea to go into that because you get visions of things that you may not know or have seen. Now, getting back to what I was talking about channeling, too, um, a lot of people are channeling Jesus and Mother Mary and all these archangels and stuff like that. And many of them are getting wonderful, beautiful messages, but I don't put those out on N5D for a reason. A good friend of mine, um, was, she channels, and she was channeling Mother Mary, and Mother Mary gave her all this wonderful information. She told me about it, and this stuff would come true you know, as, as time progressed. And finally, Mother Mary said, go kill yourself. So, I mean, all these – I think that it's these – you know, a lot of, a lot of times these – Entities that we put all of our energy into, you know, these archangels, Jesus, Mother Mary, and so on, um, they're co-opted by maybe artificial, artificial intelligence or uh, negative entities. They present themselves as these beings and then end up misleading people. And I've seen this time and time and time again where people end up getting misled. So I, I don't trust many of the Jesuses that are out there. <laughs> And, uh, you know, just be careful. If you're going to channel and you're really channeling, if you're channeling like what I'm doing and you're hearing the voices and you're getting these messages, just be really careful. And you can unplug the channel. What I did was um, I started listening to metaphysical videos at night that would drown out the voices. And eventually I just intended for them to stop and they stopped. Now, what I didn't mention, too, is that I asked these beings, where are they from? And they told me Zeta Reticuli Quadrant Z. And uh, I thought, okay, this is hot air and bullshit. This is like 10 years ago. I had no idea that there was even a Zeta Reticuli. Of course, now everyone knows about Zeta Reticuli, I think. But I thought it was hot air and BS. And I looked it up on on Google, Zeta Reticuli, and sure as hell it was there. And uh, so it it is real. Channeling is 100% real. You just got to be careful. Now, I was never misled by anything I was told through the channeling, but it's similar to having an out-of-body experience or lucid dreaming. I've always been really uh, curious about astral projection, and uh, you know, when I was young, I bought a book on astral projection when I was 12, and I never learned it back then, but one day, I think it was in 2011 or 2012, I said, okay, today's the day it's going to happen. And I lay down, I get all comfortable, and I start leaving my body. I get about maybe four or five inches out of my body, and the phone rings. I did the cardinal sin of having a distraction still turned on. And the phone rang, and immediately I came right back into my body. And I thought, okay, that's a sign. I am not supposed to be doing this, and I never tried it since then. Lucid dreaming is another thing. Uh, I've talked to so many people that lucid dream, and they say that when they lucid dream, They can't go back to normal dreaming the way we dreamt beforehand, and that's where I get a lot of visions about stuff that hasn't happened yet, and I don't want to be able to go in there and interact or command or control that. I need these visions just the way they are so I can relay them onto other people, so that's another thing. Now, uh, what you were saying, too, about George Cavasilis, I love George. I've interviewed him several times on N5D radio, and I love everything he says. I don't necessarily agree with everything he says. One, the one thing I definitely disagree with is to remove your chakras. I don't think that's a good idea. And uh, I'd be curious. I'd like to actually see him do a presentation because I can see auras. And if he still has an aura, he never removed his chakras. So be, I'd be really curious to see him live and uh, meet him. I'd love to meet him anyway. He's just such a really good person. But I don't think you can honestly remove your chakras, and I don't, I don't think you'd want to. Now, there's other things, too. A lot of people are uh, spending a lot of money on getting energy implant removals and stuff like that. And I guess you know some people, you know, if your vibration isn't high enough, if you haven't grounded yourself, maybe you need that. Um, but I find, find that as long as you have a high vibration and you're grounded, 
they can't stay in your body very long. And even if they can, they can't affect you. So to me, it's it's a waste of money for somebody like myself. I'm not saying that they're not actually doing that. They probably are. They're probably removing all this stuff from a lot of people. But if your vibration is high and you're grounded, you'll be all right. You'll make it through it. <laughs> you know, they can't. I don't think they can stay within you within your body longer than 24 to 36 hours. So if you can make it through a day and a half, you'll be all right. Thank you. And since you mentioned um, staying grounded, that was one of the things you mentioned in your um, what, one of your Facebook things about how you think some mm -hmm. people just aren't grounded. And I think you were picking on Lily Erling Kosilova for, uh, yep. for that. I um, I interviewed her, pretty good interview, and um, I think she, in general, seems to know what she's talking about. To suggest that she's not grounded seems kind of hard to believe, considering she's always obsessing about loving your planet and spending a lot of. Um, time in nature but then again um grounding many would assert is is an art it's not as simple as just stand barefoot on dirt or if it's too cold outside use and walk use a walking stick well no there's a lot more than just that that you got to do to stay grounded and many people don't realize what that other stuff you got to do to master the art is well if you're so um big on it what are the things you got to do to stay grounded um to really really truly stay grounded well First of all, with in regard to uh, Lily, if you're grounded, you're coming from the heart center. You're not going to be attacking people. So that's the first key, the first warning flag, the signal that somebody's not grounded. And uh, I have the entire conversation saved. I took screenshots of everything before I ended up blocking her. But uh, And I hate, I really, really hate, I dislike saying anything bad about anyone. But when she publicly did that to me, I actually had to say something at that point, and I, I really don't like doing that. I live by the motto of taking the high road. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. You know. And it, this has happened with other people, and I'm not going to mention their names, but I had pulled their material off of M5D. Um, but with Lily, I had to actually um, come out and call her out because she was making a complete fool of herself as far as I'm concerned, totally ungrounded in her thought and rationalization and uh, definitely not coming from the heart center. So um, while you may profess certain things, you can tell if somebody's grounded or not. Uh, where were we going with this, Andrew? <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we could uh, switch gears and do another well, – because I think you just answered the question. It's uh, come from the heart center and don't um... – Oh you yeah. Get in your face about criticizing other people, getting other people's Not face just that. Bad. Not just that too. Um, what I highly, highly, highly recommend. You know, I keep getting these messages uh, from my guide, source, universe, uh, five things that are so important. Obviously grounding, keeping a high vibration, love, gratitude, and forgiveness. Five things that I keep getting over and over and over again. That will make the world a better place in itself, but uh, one thing I highly encourage, I do what I call a walk of gratitude, and you can learn more about this on N5D.com. Just go to the upper right-hand corner, type in walk of gratitude, Greg, G-R-E-G-G, -G, and you'll find the article where I really go into depth about it. And uh, what I do is I go when I go to the beach, and you can do this anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. And I'll actually go through exactly what I say on my walk of gratitude. So there's a beach wall on Siesta Key. You were down there on Crescent Beach with uh, me and a bunch of other people at our last conference here in Sarasota. And uh, there's a seawall down on the end there on Crescent Beach. We never actually all walk down there, but that's my reminder to do the walk of gratitude. When I get there, this is what I say. Excuse me, I have to cough. Dear Creator, Source, Universe, Spirit Guides, Guardian Angels, friends and family on both sides of the veil, galactic neighbors and friends, higher self, Mother Earth, I'm sorry if I don't say this as often as I should. Please forgive me. Thank you for your unconditional love, safety, support, protection, and abundance in everything that's good in life, as I promise to listen with open eyes, ears, mind, and heart. More than anything, I love you all so very much. I ask that you help me turn on all the codons in my DNA along with activating all of my current and future strands of DNA so I can heal myself and others in humanity's best interests. At that point, 
I asked them to join me on a love bubble meditation walk back to where I came in from the beach. And what I do is I ask them to magnify their loving, healing energy from their heart center and send it out as far as they can throughout the planet, galaxy, universe, multiverse, and omniverse. And we walk back and everybody that's affected in our field, which I have millions of people behind me as well, is affected by this. So um, I highly encourage you to look up the Love Bubble Meditation or and or the Walk of Gratitude on in5d.com and start start applying that. Now, when I say, dear creator, source, universe, blah, 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 that, that's my posse. Now, if you feel comfortable with using the word God, if you want Jesus to walk with you or any archangels, Make this into your own. It's fine. Whatever makes you comfortable, but that's what makes me comfortable, and that's my posse. I love them so much, and they always are with me. But when you do that, you actually change the energy of the whole beach. Now, right before I walk, I say everyone's family, and I kind of like clap my hands as if we're leaving a huddle like in a football game. And when you look at everyone as family, you might see this grumpy guy or woman walking toward you. But if you look at them as family, like that's Aunt Clara or something. She always looks like that, but she's really funny. Uh, you look at that and you feel differently about that person. When you see everyone as family, regardless of race, it doesn't matter. When you see everyone as family, it changes the energy instantly. So I highly recommend people do that uh, if, if they have the opportunity. Yes, and everybody can do it their own version. It doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. have to be your way. Uh, love variety yes. is a good spice of life in that regard. Yes. But um, all right, let's uh, switch gears here, looking at what some of the things you have uh, in regards to uh, um, things to click on on your site. Uh, let, let's mm -hmm. uh, go to astrology because it seems like – well, it seems based on um, – <laughs> What I've seen, you are of the tropical astrology and not the sidereal astrology type. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to ask you why that's the case. But before you get into that, um, it seems like you are, well, <laughs> not obsessing, but uh, focusing to a great deal on the whole Pluto in Capricorn thing mm -hmm. about how uh, it started in, well, I think you said 2008, but I heard someone else say it was actually like early 2009 when it started. And it's supposed to go until... Um, 2024 i believe and that's supposed to signal the demise of of everything that is not in humanity's best interest and mm -hmm. um well again that's tropical astrology if you go by sidereal pluto's in sagittarius but it is gonna after it's in sagittarius it will be in capricorn so i guess if you want to when pluto is no longer in capricorn from a tropical you could in a go switch to sidereal so you could focus uh, obsessive about pluto and capricorn all over again and athens when I <laughs> him, he did say by the way um i the good news in that regard is if you think Pluto and Sagittarius is good, you ain't seen nothing yet when Pluto will be in Capricorn from a sidereal standpoint. So maybe that will mm -hmm. inspire you to become a sidereal astrologer when that happens. But as of now, you, you do seem to focus on tropical. So I'd like to ask you, why do you think that's the main astrology to uh, to go by? And in regards to Pluto and Capricorn, please, um, you've said a lot about it, but want, please elaborate on it again. And in regards sure. to what things do you think will be some of the things that are going to collapse now and when Pluto and Capricorn comes to an end um, in the um, late mid uh, 2020s um, what uh, things do you think will be the last thing that fall apart some people say it will be religion some people mm -hmm. say it will be the financial system that's one of the last things but mm -hmm. um, what do you um, think based on what you've seen will be the order of things that fall apart okay now on just you know the traditional astrology I uh, I am a Libra and I'm actually a triple Libra, which means that my sun, moon, and rising are all in Libra. What a lot of people think is that Librans are all about balance, but it's the exact opposite. We're constantly seeking balance. And anyone that knows me knows that I'm a workaholic. I work between 10 to 15 plus hours every day of the year, 365 days a year. Haven't had a day off since 2009. And uh, I am a workaholic big time. I have to force myself to go to, to the beach to ground. I'm not kidding when I say that. And um, Matter of fact, the last two days, I wanted to go, and I kept telling myself, okay, well, I didn't make it out in the morning. I'll catch the sunset. And then by the time the evening rolls around, I'm like, well, I got all this work I have to do. I'll just go tomorrow. And I keep putting it off, and I, that's not healthy, um, especially if you're Libra. Um, you, you got to find that balance and force yourself to do the grounding because it does pay off. So that's that's one of the things that um, 
really resonated with me and made it feel like this is the right astrology to follow because it's so true to me. Even though I'm a Scorpio cusp, I really have no Scorpio in me. Being a triple Libra, I'm all Libra. And uh, so that's that's one of the things that really struck a resonance with me, why this is the right one for me, at least. Now, Pluto and Capricorn, yeah, I've written quite a few articles on that, and it's really fascinating. When Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, um, right on cue, well, let me explain. Pluto is known as the destroyer, and it will tear down everything in humanity's be- uh, that's not in humanity's best interest, and it will give us the opportunity to rebuild those. So when Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, you know, according to myself and uh, astrologer Jim Delacoli, um, we saw a, a collapse of the banking system with the exception of the two big to fail slash jail banks. And it was right on schedule. And uh, since then, we're seeing uh, you know, governments being exposed. Um, gosh, Hillary should be in jail by now, but <laughs> – that's another story. Um, revolutions all around the world. The last time Pluto was in Capricorn was in the 1700s uh, during both the French and American revolutions, and we've seen revolutions all around the world. It's only a matter of time before the United States has one as well. But we will see a collapse of, the, of money, government, and religion. Now, in what order? Who knows? They're all tied together, so I don't, I don't think it matters. I think when – when one drops, the other will soon follow. It doesn't matter which one is the first one. They're all tied together. If you've ever, ever seen the video, and I highly recommend this video, it's called The Ring of Power. It's like a six-hour video, but it's wonderful. It really goes in-depth about how those three are connected, and it gets into the esoteric part of how they're connected as well, and it makes you really understand from a deep level how it's all about subservience, control, and conformity, all of them. So what I see collapsing first, I don't know. It's one of them, um, but when the first one drops, the other two will follow. What I ideally would love to see, though, is um, religion collapse first because the Roman Catholic Church has enough net worth to feed, clothe, and shelter everyone on the planet. And if that money was redistributed, to everyone on the planet, it would create instant abundance, at least if money were still around then. That would allow people to have some kind of financial freedom, even though they're still being economic slaves to a system of fiat currency that's backed by nothing. Right. Of course, if everybody was a billionaire, though, the money wouldn't be worth anything. You mm-hmm. understand how commerce works, so there would be a little bit of a catch there. So you can't just take all the 2.2 quadrillion in um, money and derivatives out there and allocate it to everybody and expect everybody to be able to do mm-hmm. much with it because it wouldn't be worth anything. So that's something worth mm-hmm. pointing out. But you did say at the um, last conference I was at uh, that you did – not the well, not the recent ones. It really killed me not to be with you at those conferences in March. Mm-hmm. But then again, based on what my horoscope said, I kind of needed to make a sacrifice then based on – based on traveling to work more on myself. So it was a sacrifice. A sacrifice, huh? If that makes sense. If that's <laughs> you made a sacrifice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, that's what my horoscope said I had to do, avoid the conferences to work on myself in the month of March. So that's why okay. I, I wasn't able to meet, uh, meet up with you. But uh wouldn't have been able to afford it anyway. I had a lot of financial issues to worry about. But since I mentioned finance. Uh, hey, it wasn't, because of the, it wasn't because of the price of the tickets for our N5D conferences. They're cheap. Uh, n- <laughs> no, it wouldn't. <laughs> Any conference, I wouldn't have been able to go for the same reason, so it wasn't wasn't right. your price. But since yes. I mentioned this um, money and all that, you did tell me at the last conference that I was at that you think that the reason the um, we haven't gone to the gold standard yet and abolished the Federal Reserve is you think the good guys and not the bad guys are holding back the um, global currency reset RV, whatever you want to want to call it, because um, among other things, it would be too much of a shock to the system and it mm-hmm. would cause America to end up like Venezuela and Zimbabwe. And they don't feel that it's in the best interest for them to do that. Cause you know, not everybody is, is like me and has like $2,000 worth of storable food and, and gold and silver to buy <laughs> the, um, new, the new currency when it comes mm-hmm. out. So that are you standing by that assertion? Definitely. Yeah. There's a reason why everything happens or doesn't happen. And, uh, if the dollar were to die and collapse, it would kill millions of people, honestly. Um, I, I don't know how they would get by because they're still caught in that illusion that the dollar is worth something. 
when it's not, and we'll all get through this, but what's going to happen is we're probably going to have to take a step backwards before we take this quantum leap forward. Um, and if it's money, if money is the first thing that collapses, I'll be dancing in the street while people are killing themselves, unfortunately. But um, I'll, hopefully I can talk them out of it and say, hey, you know, this is a blessing. We'll, we're all going to get through this. It's going to be OK. I often like love asking people and I've asked this probably thousands of times to people because even being an introvert, I will talk to people about this. If there was no such thing as money. What would you be doing with your life? Because that gives you a, an idea of what your true divine purpose of being here for. I guarantee the guy that's making fries at McDonald's isn't going to say, well, I'd keep doing the same thing. What I get oftentimes is, oh, I'd party or I'd do a lot of traveling. Okay, well, after you partied your ass off and traveled everywhere 10 times, what are you going to do? Eventually, you're going to do something. How are you going to contribute? What would you, what would you do, Andrew? Uh, well, um, uh, I guess I do whatever the, um, all the other civilizations that Alex Collier talks about that don't have money are, uh, are doing, but I, I can't really give a definitive answer yet because I don't really know what they're doing. If I have a chance to meet Alex Collier again, I definitely ask him if they don't have money, what are they doing with their lives? And whatever his answer would be, that's probably what I would be doing. So hmm. I don't have a definitive answer, but I would, if I knew what those, uh, other civilizations okay. out there were doing if you think that's a fair enough answer so with yeah. that being said um i'd really like to know what your answer is instead of through alex collier's vision what would you do right now uh probably do a lot of uh a lot of more not not convert to the new age faith but do a lot of other things that new agers do um a lot of uh, meditating out in nature i suppose mm -hmm. a lot more sun gazing and um less time uh I wouldn't have to spend as much time on my computer um, exposing and, and stuff like that like I do because, um, well, I guess without uh, there being no money around, there wouldn't be as much corruption around, which means I wouldn't have to do a lot of that exposing stuff that I do to try to keep money out of the hands of the tyrants and the uh, corrupt folks in uh, government, law enforcement, and all the rest of it. So, yes. So I could, actually, I could actually see you, Andrew, based on your answer, teaching people how to sun gaze, how to meditate – um, to help them along with their own spiritual progression. Yes. See that that's a that's a great answer right there. I, I love that. That's good. You don't <laughs> right. see you don't need Alex Collier for the answer. You, you just answered it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Thank great. you. Yes. Uh, that was the answer I was more leaning to. But I still want to know what all those other civilizations who don't uh, don't have money what they're doing because um, that I'm sure would help. Uh, we could use that as a little bit of a guide mm -hmm. to show us how we could be best leading our lives if uh if money and finance did not exist but uh, you know I've, I've often said that if a ufo were to land in your backyard there's two things that the extraterrestrial would not have money and a bible think about it it's true yeah that does make sense because <laughs> um although that's not to say religions don't exist on other planets but not in the same form as we uh as we believe it so uh Okay, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, indigos because I see you have that as one of the things here on In5D and one of the things mm -hmm. to click on. Uh, first of all, do you differentiate between um, indigos, um, star children, rainbow children? If you do, what's the difference? And um, I guess uh, what do you uh, define as the criteria for you are an indigo if you blah, 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 fill in the blank for me? It's a good question. Um, a lot of that is interpretive uh, based on what you feel. Um, I think they're just names and labels ultimately for children that are incarnating with um, that either have advanced DNA or came here from other star systems, which would be the star ch children, um, to help with the ascension of the planet. So, but the actual, you know, rainbow crystal. You know, that's they're all kind of clumped in, into the same category, um, although, you know, you could you could argue that, you know, as you progress um, as they the younger that they are, the more they're advanced as they come in with even more abilities and better, uh, higher strands of DNA, perhaps. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 all, you know, here's a great example. Um, my friend, uh, Jenny. Uh, it has a a couple uh, three daughters, uh, and when I met her and her her daughters, one stood out 
to me. And I know that as a parent, you love all your children equally, but one was very different from the other two, and that was Missy. And uh, I and I told I told Jenny I said you know she's an indigo, and as it turned out, um, Jenny um, and Missy both after Jenny's uh, middle uh, youngest child uh, I'm sorry uh, passed on in October last year they both started channeling their um, Jenny's daughter and Missy started channeling her sister through automatic writing, and uh, I knew that 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 was her gift that that. That's why she's here, to help people through her sister on the other side of the veil. Now, they have a website. It's called metamissy.com, and I helped Missy build that website. And they have a lot of great articles on there. So if you have the chance to check it out, do it because it's a fascinating story that they tell. And, uh, you know, so sometimes you can just tell. You just know when you meet kids or see people, you know that there's something special within them. And uh, those are the ones that are here to help. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, try to check that out um, after this interview. Um, mm-hmm. Look into that. Uh, but um, all right, another thing to um, discuss here. All right, let's talk about some of the things that you would put on a the Woo Woo Media page. This is um, kind of controversial based on what some of your uh, fans have told you because this is kind of out of their out of their bubble, out of their their comfort zone but hey if you want to expose the nature of reality like i do all the time it's mm-hmm. worth um it's worth making a site about it i guess because well some of the entities and such that you would talk about on woo woo media are of a higher level consciousness standpoint like um andrew bartis has said that the um creature we know as, as sasquatch yeti bigfoot whatever you want to call it um mm-hmm. It's uh, just – well, that is not true of all of them, uh, but many of them are just higher level consciousness entities that are temporarily incarnating as a – like an ape-like elemental creature in order to wake humans up to the fact that paranormal things do actually exist. And I'm willing to bet the same is probably true with Nessie the Loch Ness Monster and Champ the Monster and Lake Champlain and any other uh, sea monsters that maybe people have uh, have seen out there. And also um, with uh, with ghosts, like what is a ghost? Um, I've heard different tales, uh, different points of view on this. There's the whole pop culture thing about ghosts um, having some sort of unfinished business. And um, the reason they're a ghost is because they have, um, well, the unfinished business that they got to take care of, which prevents them from, from, from crossing over. But to, uh, David Icke has talked about ghosts. They're just um, entities in an, of another frequency. And um, when you see the uh, ghost, um, that's just an interference of their frequency with um, with our frequency. But that's just the uh, the tip of the iceberg. Um, when it comes to uh, other creatures that would fit in the woo woo media, what what based on your knowledge, what do you um, have to say? I'll give you the floor to talk about this. Just take as long as you need. And also, by all means, could you maybe explain why some people think uh, feel that this is out of their uh, out of their comfort zone? What is it about it? The comfort zone part might be that if you are afraid of these beings or entities, then there's really something within yourself that you're afraid of. It's not necessarily those beings, but it's something within that that scares you. So uh, I can I can understand that, and maybe part of that is facing the unknown uh, that brings people out of their comfort zone. And which, you know, when when I sage my house, I ask that all negative entities leave immediately. Only those of the highest vibration of truth, love, and light are welcome here. You see, I do welcome those beings of that have the vibration of truth, love, and light in my house. They're welcome to stop in any time, manifest right in front of me. I would love that, and they have. Um, but. There's times where you also, you know, everyone listening, I'm sure, has had that experience where you've been in a house or been had an experience where you knew something negative was in the area. And uh, a lot of times, you know, your hair might rise on your skin or something like that, and you just feel like something's not right. This energy that I'm feeling is coming from left field. I don't, I don't like this energy. A lot of times, you know, it'd be easy to send that to smudge and just to tell them that they're not welcome there. But what they're really 
probably trying to ask for is that you help them. Um, so the first thing I would do, you know, once you're comfortable with this, of course, is uh, to trans- help transmute them, send them back to the light, tell them that it's okay. You know, um, you, you might feel like you're earthbound, but you don't have to be here. Look up, follow the light, go back into the light. Um, from It's my understanding that the uh, false light construct has been disabled. I'm not sure. Uh, I can't prove it one way or the other. But um, even if it wasn't, you know, worst case scenario, you come back again and uh, you still you still will have that chance to keep moving forward. But you're not going to move forward if you're stuck here as an earthbound entity. So either way, you know, tell them to go back to the light and uh, it's OK and send them back with love. Uh, so, and that's what woo woo media basically is. It's it's uh, touching on the paranormal more so than anything else. But we do also cover um, you know, a lot of uh, UFO stuff and sightings and stuff like that too, which shows that we're certainly not alone. Even though many of them could well be, you know, government UFOs that we know have been going on for probably decades. But um, yeah, it's it's just pushing people. Maybe sometimes a little out of their comfort zone, but to ultimately find themselves. So just like in 5D and anybody that's truth seeking, I highly encourage question everything because when you question everything, you know, chemtrails, GMOs, 9-11, right down the line, ultimately you're really questioning yourself and what you're going to find is yourself. And it's, it's a beautiful process. So, uh, and it makes things totally um, at ease. For example, uh, I, I play in a several fantasy football leagues in upstate New York. Um, I've been watching and following football all my life. Now, the interesting thing about football and any sport is it's based on the divide and conquer principle. It's always my tribe against your tribe. It's you know divide and conquer. It's Fans that are going against each other, you know, and for no stupid reason. Even look at some of the names in the uh, in the NFL, the Tennessee Titans or the New York Giants. Are are, are they really saying that, or are they saying the uh, Tennessee Anunnaki <laughs> or the New York Elohim or something, you know? And it's always traditional, the traditional sense of divide and conquer: Dallas versus Washington or Kansas City. If Dallas is playing either of those teams, it's Cowboys versus Indians. You know, it, but when you see things from that view and understand that, yeah, okay, I see the game that's being played with inside the game, that it is about divide and conquer. You look at sports from a different perspective. And uh, so for me, football, the NFL football, American football is nothing more than a distraction that I welcome because as a workaholic, I look for things that will actually distract me. And uh, for one Sunday during football season, if I'm distracted by football, thank you, universe, (laughs) because I'm a workaholic. Get me away from work just a little, and I'm happy. And I'm still happy working, but I love doing what I do, but I'm a workaholic. I need to have other distractions outside of work. Yes, I think um, football on Sunday is a good way to uh, take a three-hour vacation if you uh, have a very, uh, very hectic life. I Mm -hmm. I do follow the same principle, but um, I wanted to uh, mention about the whole comfort zone thing, about how some of that paranormal stuff does get people out of their comfort zone, and I see this as a little bit of a a hindrance to the um, awakening of humanity when there are people, um, particularly in the um, spiritual community, who insist that um, not strictly new age uh, they are, but um, just, just don't really want to say anything um, negative. Best one of the best examples I can give of this was when I was at uh, Andromeda Council Contact Tolik's um, conference in um, Arizona uh, this past October. Um, one of the speakers was uh, Stuart Swordlow, and he caused a lot of bad vibes at that um, mm. conference relative to other speakers talking about things like a false alien invasion being staged. And he said something to the effect of, We do not have a prayer. And Tolik went out of the way to issue uh, an apology because he was told that a lot of people got uncomfortable with that. But um, I sent Tolik a message myself telling him, You didn't have to make a fool of yourself with that apology. The only people that don't want to apologize 
apology or the people in the audience at that conference who couldn't suck it up and face what Stuart Swerdlow has said and not feel uncomfortable about it because as far as I'm concerned, those people are a hindrance to the awakening of humanity in the same way that sheeple who refuse to wake up are a hindrance to humanity because they uh, can't bear listening to stuff that is outside their comfort zone, albeit they're not awake, they're sheeple, but they're kind of on the same spectrum as all those people who are spiritually awake because they get uncomfortable because stuff is out of their comfort zone and I, uh, I, I oh my god I, I hate to say this um, with you on the air because I know it probably means a lot to you very close to your heart and a lot of people who are very close to her might uh, may want to kick me in the nuts after I say this but the fact is um, not being able to put up with that kind of stuff can be a, not only a hindrance to the awakening of humanity but can be a big fl- blunder from your own um, awakening standpoint and also your own health standpoint. Someone that you know very well and I knew very well, um, our dear f- uh, friend, the late Helene Lipson, she took um, this whole thing to an extreme. Uh, like when we had that conference in Los Angeles, I told everybody, bring your iodine with you because uh, of the radiation of her uh-huh. regime. And she flat out deleted my post. And she and Claudia Miller were really bitching at me at the uh, conference saying, please don't say anything about Fukushima or any of that other um, stuff that you like uh, talking about because it's going to make people uncomfortable and and all that. And um, Helene would um, very often when she was doing um, some shows when people were talking about chemtrails, GMOs and and all that other um, stuff that people like uh, Alex Jones and Fair Porners like to talk about, um, she would say, this is making me feel uncomfortable and all. Well, maybe I'm off my hinges when I say this, but I got a feeling that had Helene Lipson learned a little bit of discipline and learned not to get uncomfortable listening to that stuff, she may have been able to overcome her cancer and she'd still be alive today. That may be a strong thing to say, but, you know, maybe I should stand by it because, hey, if you not being able to um, handle listening to really hard, uh, serious stuff that shows that you're not um, being as strong as you can be. And maybe that was what kind of sealed her fate. Am I off my hinges or do you think maybe I got a good point here when I say that people like her need to suck it up and, and learn some discipline reg- listening to some stuff that makes you uncomfortable? Well, I mean, you're definitely entitled to your opinion. And uh, I know that. You know, what, as a stage three cancer survivor, um, I was probably the first person that she came to and asked me for what my opinion was. Now, I sent her to um, Darcy Hotchkiss, who does pure bioenergy healing, and she was getting good results with that. But Darcy told her, you cannot do any medication while you're doing this. And as a matter of fact, the tumor in her chest was shrinking while she was seeing Darcy, but she went back to the medication and it just unhinged everything that was positive. So she had an opportunity to beat the cancer. Now, getting back to my cancer in 2007, you know, having a stage three, usually when it hits stage three, it's terminal. And I kind of view it like you're traveling down the highway and you have all these exits and Everyone listening has probably had at least one exit point where they might not be here today. Okay, so that, that, and I guarantee you've had that too, Andrew, where you had some life changing experience where, you know, a a fraction of a second difference made all the difference in the world and of us having this interview today and you not being here. Um, So that was, that was one of my exits, um, was in 2007. And uh, I beat it. I, I, I knew I would. Um, fun, funny thing is, um, having a stage three cancer, I, you know, they, they wanted to do chemo and radiation. I said, no, just cut it out. That's it. <laughs> you know, that, that cut it out, send me on my merry way. And I haven't had any, any, um, relapse of cancer since then, but, um, what it ended up being, I had the cancer on the right hand side of my body. It's a melanoma. And on my lower part of my back, and I have this probably eight inch incision scar, back there from where they removed it and what it was if you anyone that's taken QHHT training knows that anything that happens on your right hand side of of your body is a current life experience if you stub your toe it's telling you a message of something in the current life on your right hand side of your body on your left hand side it's past life and here's a great example um, I've had a sciatica issue for 
gosh, 25 plus years, and it was on my left hand side. The L3, L4 are compressed. I've seen the X-rays, bone on bone. So when I was up in New York with Michelle, we stopped to visit a friend of ours, uh, a psychic, Cindy Staffen. So we went to her office, and uh, her friend uh, Catherine was there, and she had a John of God bed. And I was asking her about, okay, well, I've got this. I was squatting down at the time because my sciatica was so much in pain from just walking basically across the street, maybe uh, you know, 50 yards. And I was squatting, talking to her and saying, okay, what, what does this John of God bed do? She says, well, it basically cures anything. I'm not sure if she used the word cure or heal, but you know, as a, you know, a holistic healer, you got to be careful about the words you say. I said, well, what about sciatica? She said, sure. And I said, okay. So I, I gave it a shot. And what the John of God crystal bed is, is this bed. It's, a, it's basically a massage table with a sheet on it and a pillow. And there's seven lights that are aligned to your chakras, and they flash intermittently. And there's a, what they do is they put a, a towel over your eyes, and you have a headset where you're listening to this ambient music. While all this is happening, these beings of light come in, and they work on you. And it might be for 30 minutes or an hour, 45 minutes, whatever you decide to pay for. And... uh so I, I did that for like like 45 minutes, I believe, the first time, and uh, got done with it. Afterwards, I felt really good, but I could still feel that was there. She said, "That's okay. They continue working on you um, throughout, you know, until it's really gone." I'm like, "Okay." Within three days, it was gone. Um, I consider this a bigger miracle than beating cancer because cancer wasn't painful. Sciatica is when you have that pain, it feels like someone's stabbing you in the back and it's going all the way down into your toes. Now, to this day, I still have that numbness in my toe. And I asked her and Cindy about that, and they said that that's the reminder to express gratitude for the healing. And it makes perfect sense. And it's one of the many things that I'm very, very grateful for that I do not take for granted. Um, so. All right, well, interesting you point out about um, things on the left have to do with past life. I don't know if you saw the comment I put on your uh, um, presentation that you gave at that um, conference, but I, I did say, wait a minute, is this really true? Because if you remember at the um, Sarasota conference, um, I asked um, that lady who was channeling that kid who committed suicide. Mm -hmm. um, Kim Babcock. Yeah, uh, why is there um, this pain that I'm getting in my right quad on an on and off basis and she said it has something to do with past life coming back to to haunt you and if you remember that night was the night of a full moon and we all went to the beach and then i asked for this to be cleared uh past life stuff to be cleared specifically the quad pain and then ever since that day the pain in the quad never came back so that does seem wow. to fly in the face of what you said about uh past life stuff coming from the left side or more specifically fly in the face of what whoever told you that um, is true. So is it reasonable to say maybe mine was just a um, an exception to confirm the rule because it's not set in stone that it's always um, going to be left side is past life and right is present? Can there be exceptions? I'd imagine there could be exceptions, but I would think that there is still something that was in your current life that needed to be healed as well, that got healed that day. Okay. I'm Fair sticking enough. with that because, you know, from my experience, the cancer was on the right-hand side of my body. And at the time, I was going through my second marriage, and it wasn't it wasn't good at that time. And of course, you know, you just can't point the finger at the other person. It takes two people to make it success successful, and it was both of our faults. And uh, but it was manifesting as cancer, and the, the relationship was cancerous. And uh, you know, I have obviously since um, divorced and moved on, forgiven. Uh, sent, sent her love. This is a great thing, great story too about um, ex-wife number two. The day I left, I went for my walk on – at the time I was living in Apollo Beach and um, I went for a walk there. I found a vase in the water and I cleaned it up and I put shells in there. I filled it up with shells and each shell I put up – put uh, put in that vase, I – put the energy of send my ex-wife love, healing, compassion, strength, 
and uh, would put that into the vase and filled the vase up. And when I got back to the house, I gave it to her and said, and I told her that if you ever have a day where things just aren't going right and you just want to, you know, escape or get away, take a shell out, make a wish, and return it back to Earth. And the last I knew, a couple of years ago, she still had the vase. I don't know if she still had all the shells in it. There might have been a few shells missing by then, but she still had it, and that that was pretty cool. And ironically, um, I remember that's when – during that marriage, at the end of my marriage with her, I watched The Secret, which changed my life, as everyone knows. And uh, – I told, I was so excited about it. And when I told her about it, she said, well, my mom read the book and she said it's a bunch of spiritual mumbo jumbo. But you have to know that my ex-wife and her parents are from Arkansas and they're deeply religious. So, of course, they're not going to see things from a metaphysical standpoint. And uh, anyone that knows me since then um, has seen exactly where the law of attraction has brought me. And it's brought me it's brought me everything. Um, and I, I couldn't have been happier. And but it also brought me away from her. She's since remarried, and I'm so happy for her. You know, that's part of the the process is when you release someone. If you're going through a relationship, forgive them. That's huge. Just and you only have to forgive them once. And f- remember to forgive yourself as well. That's it. One time, according to Dolores Cannon, you only have to go through forgiveness once. Uh, so forgive them um, and mean it. Send it from the heart because when they do their life review, they're going to see that too. They're going to see their life through your eyes. And even at the most trying times, you're putting out love and forgiveness. So that's huge. Please do that. Forgive. It's one of the major points that I've been telling. One of the five major points is, uh, like I said beforehand, and it's worth repeating. Keep your vibration high. Stay grounded. Love, forgive, and express gratitude. All right, but in regards to forgiveness, um, are you the kind of person that doesn't seek justice because you see justice as a glorified revenge? I, I mean, to, to say that you shouldn't seek justice, um, uh, that's kind of what many would assert. You're basically saying, okay, I don't care if you try to take advantage of me, whatever you want, because I'm always going to forgive you. You're basically asking people to, um, to have their way with you, take advantage of you, and do all kinds of bad things to you. So you got it. Some many would assert you definitely got to draw a line if even if you believe justice is glorified revenge you can't always have that because you will the law of attraction will come back to bite you in that regard because people will always have their way with you so when when do you draw the line on justice is not worth seeking because it's glorified revenge i can't think of one situation really so you're not the kind of guy that um believes what i do like um if hypothetically you are uh yeah you know i went through this experience in arizona um getting pulled over by a cop who doesn't know transportation laws only apply to those in commerce and so he uh goes ballistic when you stand up for your rights and all that you don't believe it's in your best interest to uh get the incident on film and then sue the living crap out of them as a way of teaching them you're not going to get away with violating my rights this easily you you saying it's not worth it to do that not for me, no, but I respect anyone that feels that that is their path to follow. Ultimately, um, if if that's something you feel that you need to do and to expose them, I think that that's great. I love, I love the truthers that are out there that are exposing these crimes, but eventually you get to that point where what are you exposing? You're exposing yourself. You're exposing your own vul- vulnerabilities. And uh, like I said, all this truther stuff, I love all – Every truther out there, I greatly appreciate everything they're doing. But what you're doing is finding yourself, and eventually that's what's going to happen. You'll find yourself, and a lot of this stuff really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is love. The only thing. Fair enough. It's the only truth. Everything else is illusion. Um, oh, yes. you mentioned the secret. Um, the one many major flaw with the secret, um, well, aside from the fact that it's kind of new agey. I mean, a lot of the stuff they said is true, but they left out a few important things. One important thing they they left out is the whole thing about destiny tuning, where you have to like a uh, radio sending out um, sending out a transmission. You got to um, radiate out um, frequencies that will allow for the law of attraction to work. So you got to tune yourself to be able to do that. Um, 
um, among other ways to do that, listen to subliminal audios, which contain <laughs> subliminal messages of sorts that will unblock things in your in your subconscious mind that are acting as a block to keep the law of attraction from manifesting. That's one thing the secret did not um, really talk about. But with that <laughs> being said, what are some destiny tuning methods that you may um, that I'm sure you utilize to make sure the law of attraction will uh, work to its fullest potential? Andrew, I, I think a lot of people are overthinking the process. It's, and we tend to do that. Our monkey minds get the best of us. And uh, I, I'm certainly guilty of that. Um, a friend of mine, I love her dear, dearly, my, uh, one of my co-hosts on in 5 d uh, radio, Kendra. Her little monkey mind is going a million miles an hour, and she's constantly questioning things and overthinking stuff. But, of course, she's a Virgo, and Virgos have a tendency to do that. Not all Virgos, but uh, she will overthink things a lot. So, um, and, and I think the same thing's going on here. It's too simple. Really, what you put out comes back. That's it. You put out love, it comes back. You put out gratitude, it comes back. And not only does it come back, it comes back like tenfold or more. Um, it's so simple. The example I've used a million times, and I've got so many pictures. Every time it happens now, I, I stop and take a picture. Is when I go to Crescent Beach on Siesta Key. There's only like 25 parking spots there. And uh, I always intend that I'm going to get one of the first three parking spots. The secret has you intend that you'll find the one parking spot. But, you know, if, if universe is abundant, I'm asking for three and I'll have my, my pick of them. So I do that. And here's another great example of what I'm saying. One time, and to understand how emotion plays into it, um, one time I, I was going to watch the sunset. And for some reason, there was a ton of traffic going over the bridge to Siesta Key. Now, I only lived two miles from Crescent Beach, and uh, it took me about 20, 25 minutes to get there, but the whole time. Now, if this had happened to me maybe 15, 20 years ago, I'd be like you know, swearing, what the hell's happening? I'm never, I'm never going to get a parking spot. Well, that's part of the universe. Um, it's indiscriminate on what you put out there. I'm never going to get a parking spot. Your wish is my command. But this time, you know, knowing how the, the law of attraction works, I knew that there was a reason why everything was slowing down, why it took that long to go two miles. And sure as hell, when I pulled into the parking lot, as soon as I pull in, the car at the first parking spot, the, par the spot closest to the beach was pulling out. And of course, the first thing I'm going to say is thank you, universe. So when these things happen, especially when things don't seem like they're going your way, and it seems like universe is working against you, it's not, and they are going your way. And Everything is happening specifically for a reason. It's always – universe is always guiding you to your ultimate life purpose and spiritual destiny. Pay attention to the signs. It's so simple. Don't get upset over the, the, the little things like getting caught in traffic. Know that universe is conspiring to please you. Universe wants to please you. It's making sure that everything is falling into place. But once you get into your mind and out of your heart and you start thinking, oh, God, look at this traffic. I'm never going to get a parking spot. Well, then, once again, it's also going to – it doesn't care whether you're putting out positive stuff or negative stuff. It universe is going to please you. If it thinks that I'm never going to get a parking spot is going to please you, <laughs> then your wish is their command, and that's what's going to happen. So just stay in your heart when you're, when you're using the secret and know that you're always being guided in the right direction. No matter what happens in your life, it's always leading you in the right direction. Right, right. Um, what I wanted to ask you about, um, you say you use um, uh, things to clear out the negative energies out of your house. Are you sure you're not uh, wasting your money with that? Because I seem to recall uh, Michelle Walling interviewed uh, Daniel Teague. I interviewed him too. And before mm -hmm. um, he came on my show, he did actually, he admitted on, on the show that he did uh, scan my my home for negative energies and he cleared them i would have to think that he did the same thing to your property when uh michelle walling interviewed him and if that's the case then he would have also put protection around your uh your property in order to prevent negative energies from coming back so if you are using um like smudging and things like that to keep any of negatives out well you're you're kind of wasting your money because you don't have to because daniel teague already did all the work for you so do, do you still think maybe it is in your best interest to continue doing um 
um, smudging and all that for other reasons, or have I just convinced you I don't need to waste my money on that anymore? Because no, I, did all I, no I, I, don't, I totally disagree. I, um, every time you go out, say you go out to get gasoline, you're picking up the energies of the last person that touched the gasoline uh, gas pump. You go to the store, you pay for something in cash, you're getting money back. Every dollar that, that has, that's been touched by every person has their energy on that. So you're bringing in new energies all the time. If there's a point in time where you feel you need to smudge, I highly recommend doing it. All right. Maybe I should get back to Daniel, what he meant when he said he put protection around. I did actually ask him in my interview with him, like hypothetically, if, if you were to clear the house and someone uh, decides to, because they believe in using violence, to escalate violence by themselves, a gun and brings a gun in the house, is that going to bring in negative energies? I, I think I better check and re-see what his answer to that is. But um may I help answer the question there a little better but um all right switching gears here um got a couple more questions i want to ask you and then um i guess we'll um call it a night like i said i want mm-hmm. to around 755 or so to catch the uh sunset and uh, please don't okay. think i'm singling you out here some of my other guests i'm gonna have in the near future uh since sunset's around 8 30 i may actually end, do a minute hour and 50 minutes shows instead of two hours for that reason Great. alone but uh yeah because i love the sun that much and the sunset i know means that much to me i so, know i remember seeing you uh doing sun gazing inside the drum circle that was the, the last time, time you were here it. yes uh, yeah that was yeah. great and don't you dare tell my ophthalmologist mother or i'm gonna keep mm. you nuts <laughs> all right yeah okay but um <laughs> there was a screw me. yeah all right um you uh, mentioned that it uh, people have told you that uh you got uh spirit guides and angels um the good spirit guides and angels with you to a great extent and i've been told the same thing by people like sean cohen and they've mm-hmm. even made themselves um manifest like when i um bought some um metaphysical chips of sorts off um, some guy who sells um, like pyramids and stuff and all uh, to uh, and also chips and orgone tablets to put on your uh, computer and such. I got some for my for my cell phone and I discovered that they were disappearing. And when I called the um, manufacturer, uh, well, excuse, not the manufacturer, the people who were selling them to me, um, do you, have you ever gotten complaints about this from your customers? Like, why are the things you're selling me disappearing? They said no, but um, the wife of the person who runs the site. She uh, told me that my paternal grandfather, who died in the year 2000, um, was communicating with her, telling her that the reason my angels and guides were taking the things, the chips from me was their way of making their presence known. And they were basically trying to tell me, you don't need to waste your money on these things because we'll keep <laughs> you safe from all the EMFs and other negative energies that comes from the phones so, and the computers and all that. So don't bother buying them well if they're going to take me from them i'm sure that i would have to think that they're going to compensate me for the 15 dollars or whatever it was that i spent on that <laughs> in some way shape because well if they're angels of guides they would certainly find a way to do that for me but my point is um the angels and guides they're with me and i've even been told by this lady who has the ability to read souls at Tolex um conference this past october she told me uh whatever it is that you're doing in life make sure you keep doing it to your fullest potential andrew i checked your soul you are protected and when i heard that i thought well that's very reassuring and then the second thing i thought was wow i wish i could read souls the way you could but Mm -hmm. nonetheless it was pretty reassuring to hear um to hear her say that to me and well if my soul is protected in the sense that the uh evil powers that be are not gonna try to kill me in order to stop me if that's what she meant then i would have to think the same would definitely be true with you with all the stuff that you've done with um within 5d but when you hear people say um, things like you got a lot of spirits, guides, and angels from higher levels of consciousness watching you, protecting you, and guiding you. Um, what can you take away from that aside from reassurance? Well, guaranteed. I think, well, first off, uh, apparently your angels and guides are kleptos. <laughs> okay, why do you say that? <laughs> well, I keep taking your orgone, organite. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, anyway, um, I know that you know. I've been told by Sean and Rachel Kirkland and another psychic that um, I have the largest what I call posse behind that they've ever seen. Um, there's literally millions and upon millions of people behind me, and I wonder how many other people also got that same galactic download but didn't listen to it to build in 5D because I. I'm sure, just like the the tidal wave dream, when I put it out there, there's like 10 or 12 people that had the same dream of three tidal waves. So I'm sure other people had to have had that galactic download that I got saying, okay, you have to build this website. Here's the name for it in 5D. You have to do all this 
public speaking and stuff. And uh, it makes me wonder about that. But I do have a huge posse. Not that anyone else doesn't have it. Everyone has a lot, so much help and guide guidance behind them. Well, oftentimes we forget to ask for help. Our guides and angels can only do so much, but if you ask them, they can do a little bit more. So, and even even when you ask them, sometimes it might not manifest the way you think it's going to, because there's something you need to learn beforehand, and you have to understand that these things are are, are happening for a positive reason. That not that they're working against you, but everything that's happening in your life right now is guiding you to where exactly you need to be. So understand that what you're you're going through right now, what anyone's going through right now, is always leading them in the right direction. And when you comprehend that that's always in your greatest and highest good, it's a lot easier to understand, okay, that's why I've had this bad break. And when you get these bad breaks and you look back at, at them maybe two or three months down the road, you, uh, you get, get a better understanding. Ah, that's why it happened. That's the lesson I needed to learn. Here's a great example. And I've talked about this on N5D. Um, my, my mother's a type A controlling personality. Um, so, um, you know, the first time I got married, I married another type A personality and that didn't work. And I married marriage number two, very similar to my mom. As a matter of fact, wife number two was born on the same exact day as my mom. This is how universe was trying to get me to understand this is your message. And my message was not to confront my ex-wives, but to confront my mother, which I ended up doing, um, uh, in my late forties. And, and this was the first time I, any of us me or my two sisters had confronted my mother and she backed right down and that was the message uh, that I kept getting and it took me 40 some odd years to understand what that message was so sometimes it, it'll take a while if you're really not paying attention but of course when I was younger I wasn't really looking for those signs I didn't have have a grasp of why these things are coming into my life I just thought well this is the way it is it's the way it's always going to be no it's not it's they're coming to into your life these these incidents are coming into your life for a reason to learn from and to move forward in your own spiritual progression i guarantee you that my mother volunteered to teach me this lesson as painful as it was for her on the other side of the veil to volunteer for that she wanted to do this to me to make me stronger as an individual you know and from that point forward there's no way I'm going to be with a type A personality. I'm too laid back. I'm too much of a free spirit to be controlled by somebody else. So that's not going to happen again. All right. I wish I had best luck in that. And, um, well, by the way, the, my angels and guides can take all my organ. It was just the one, the specific stuff, <laughs> the cell phone that they that gotcha. they were taking from me. And they took it from me on two separate occasions. And mm -hmm. after that, there were a couple of uh, rewards that I got in life that I were unexpected. So I guess that was their way of compensating me for the for the money that I had to um, spend on that because they're not going to take do something like that if they're truly benevolent mm -hmm. without finding a way to compensate you for the financial aspect and also the energetic aspect with the, mm -hmm. the protection all that's for sure. But um, – all right, one thing I wanted to ask you, um, I uh, you've made it clear, yeah, you're still smoking tobacco, and um, are there? I want to ask you if you feel that there's any benefits from that. I I had actually quit smoking tobacco uh, in November 2013, and I had quit for about three years, but then I just started to start smoking again after I heard Andrew Bartz's talk about how he uses um, tobacco to uh, help him communicate in two dimensions to make it easier for people who are like sheeple to to understand the far out stuff that he talks about, and I figure well i could certainly use that with the far out crazy stuff i talk about my show that many people who can't use their um crown chakras and such wouldn't um wouldn't know two shits about so um and i believe it has helped me in that regard although the only tobacco i smoke is mapacho and i must say when you uh, those times you gave me all those uh free cigarettes i appreciate it although i must say it was kind of intimidating because you know mapacho out of a pipe you don't inhale that and i was like mm -hmm. Ooh, i have to inhale tobacco this is kind of a uh, intimidating because cigarettes are the ones you inhale but i, I give you credit for making sure that you smoke American spirit that's mm -hmm. got no additives and chemicals 
and all that. Although, um, if hey, if you ever day ever comes where you want to quit, but you don't want to quit cold turkey, I would certainly advise maybe switching to cigars and then eventually switching to pipes because <laughs> when you don't inhale, that causes you to not – it doesn't go into your lungs because inhaling into your lungs is like the great, best way to become addicted to it. If you just um, just put it in your mouth and then drown it out, it's going to go into your system a lot slowly and the come down isn't going to be as, as intense and it's not going to give you an instant high. Um, like it's going to be a calm, nice, gradual high and all that, a nice, gradual come down. But – um, since you are of the uh, tobacco smoking variety, do you actually uh, feel that it is of uh, it has actually done you some benefit to use a substance like that? Because after all, there are shamans in this world who don't use tobacco recreationally; they use it as a as an entheogen, a shamanic inebrian, which is not mm -hmm. recreational use. So, do you um, see a, like a, a good benefit um, from it? Since you're a smoker, I wanted to ask you. <laughs> Well, to my fellow smoker, yeah, I do, actually. Um, there's many times, and I know this is probably a crutch and it might be an excuse, but um, I've been smoking since I was 18 years old. And uh, But I know that there's times where I just have to walk away from work to have a cigarette, and that's just universe saying, okay, get away from work. You're a workaholic. It gets, it gets me away from work. Of course, when I walk away from work, work and have my cigarette, I'm also um, thinking, okay, I read an article about this. Wouldn't it be a good idea if I did an article on that or something or some inspiring message will come to me while I'm having that cigarette for an article to write? So um, it gets me away from work. It gives me ideas of things to write for on N5D. And, uh, you know, of course, like I said, it could be a crutch. Why can't I just walk away? I know I can't because I'm a workaholic. It's it's not that easy to walk away from work. But when you need that cigarette, um, it's it makes it a lot easier to walk away. Um, for for me, I yeah, I do smoke American Spirit Gold, the organic one. And it's funny when you do see people at conferences, uh, spiritual conferences, if they smoke, chances are they're smoking American Spirit. Now, I had a uh, energy clearing. I did an interview with Eric Rains, and he cleared cleared me but he said that there's one um contraption in my chest that actually works in my benefit there's a positive one that prevents me from having any chest issues from smoking and i found that really ironic because like i said i've been smoking since i was 18 years old anyone that knows me um you know girlfriends michelle can tell you that uh when i wake up in the morning i don't have that smoker's hack all throughout the day, I'm not hacking at all. There's no smoker's cough. There's no, you know, raspy voice from smoking for so long. And um, it, smoking doesn't affect me. It has no negative consequence on me, as far as I know. Um, you know, I'm not coughing up phlegm and all that stuff. So to me, it's it's it, it does it does provide a wonderful outlet to get away from work, and uh, gives me inspiration to write other articles. So I'm grateful for. Smoking. I'm not encouraging anyone to smoke, obviously, but it works for me. Yeah, I would say the same. Uh, Mapacho, of course, my tobacco of choice. I call it tobacco zilla. That's the kind that uh, some ayahuasca shamans will occasionally put in their um, mm -hmm. ayahuasca. You know, I wanted to take an ayahuasca, but I really wanted to go down to South America this um, this year. But I found out the time I could go down would have been the same time as that solar eclipse in. Uh, in uh, August, and my brother, who lives in Charleston, who recently um, had a baby, which um, makes mm -hmm. me an uncle, going to go down there and see the um, solar eclipse. Uh, oh, yeah. With that being said, uh, one final question on your um, uh, what your first Facebook thing. You did mention something about some person talking about that solar eclipse in, um, in uh, August uh, 21st. I mm -hmm. think it's going to be visible all across America. Could you maybe just um, take a couple minutes here briefly to explain what you think the significance of that eclipse will be? Um. Honestly, that's a great question. I don't have a. I wish I had a great answer. I don't have answers for everything, obviously. Um, but and that's one I don't have an answer for. But the the video was from Allison Co. And her the previous video that she put out was talking about one of her clients. Allison's a QHHT uh, clinician, and uh, she gets messages from her clients. And uh, her clients have been talking about these three tidal waves of energy. And according to one particular client, she said that this one that's coming up uh, during the solar eclipse is a, another big wave. She's calling this wave number two. Now, as I mentioned in my um, 
in my dream, I saw these first two waves converging, coming together. So I guess it would be possible for this wave to come together with the other wave if you think of waves as concentric circles and dropping a pebble into uh, still water. It's going to go to the center and then come back out again and then merge with all the other waves that have came in. So it's possible it could be that. I'm not feeling it is, but because you will know the whole world, every it will be undeniable when these two waves meet together, it's going to change everything. So if that's the case, I really hope it is. That's only a few months away. I, I, I'm not feeling that that is the, the one that's going to change everything. I wish – I really, really hope it is. But I, you know, I don't know when that's going to happen. I have no dates. So – um, but it is something. It's going to be powerful, and I, I, I'm hoping that you know it does cause major transformations. I'm putting that intention out there. Hmm. Okay, you, you muted yourself, uh, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, I did. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes, I uh, bad habit. Uh, hope it will uh, have a nice transformation on me when I see it. Uh, when I see it in Charleston, it's one of those things you just want to try to schedule. Uh, a pilgrimage to at least once in your life, a, a, a solar eclipse and all. So, oh yeah, definitely worth it. Um, so that being said, I guess I'll bring this interview to a close. It was very, very mm -hmm. exciting. Glad you uh, overcame your introvert fears. Not that you had any, but um, you did. <laughs> I uh, do. Yeah, okay. Well, you, you've definitely <laughs> overcome them to a very, very great extent. It, it hasn't shown in some of your uh, recent interviews that you've done. I don't really sense any butterflies in your stomach, even though you've um, said you had them. So keep up the good work. I'm sure you'll overcome those, uh, those fears over the course of time. To the Look at my leg like tapping while I'm doing those uh, Facebook Live. and They're still there, Andrew. Uh, trust me. <laughs> well, it'll only go away over the course of time course of time i assure you so yeah all right great having you on greg uh i'll put this to youtube hopefully by tomorrow at the uh midnight at the absolute latest and i'll spread it far and wide just like i do with all my other guests thank you for coming on i'll Thanks definitely do my can to be at any future conferences that you schedule take your time with that and by the way if you ever um need a speaker at your conference you can ask me i will not ask you to give me any money to come to the event so um, <laughs> that's I'm so awesome that. all right so um, uh, well before before you let me go, first of all, I want to say congratulations to you for becoming an uncle. And uh, for anyone that's listening, uh, please, I started doing Facebook live streams uh, on my uh, Facebook page. So just uh, go to Greg Prescott, start following me, and join in on these. We're getting a lot of people. I think the first video that I put out a couple of days ago got 10,000 views already. So join in. I, I'd love to hear from everybody there. And if not, uh, please visit my websites, uh, in5d.com bodymindsoulspirit.com and woowoomedia.com Thank you and the best of luck to you. Take care Thank now. you brother. Namaste. All right, take care. Namaste bro.